Hey guys, today we're talking about the differences between preceptal and orbital cellulitis. Let's approach this by understanding the anatomical differences between both processes. Cellulitis implies an infection of the skin. Depth of involvement determines the severity of the infection. In case of the eyelid, septum is the main barrier layer. This is a membranous connective tissue layer which separates the anterior part of the eyelid from the posterior part. If the infection is anterior to the septum, which means it only involves the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, it is called preceptal cellulitis. On the contrary, if the infection has breached the septum barrier and entered into the postseptal space, it is called orbital cellulitis. As you can predict, these infections are more serious. They could affect the vital structures in the eye socket, such as the optic nerve, and structures behind it, such as the cavernous sinus and the brain. We can understand the differences between preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis by looking for a few key signs. Preceptal cellulitis presents as a skin infection. So similar to infection of skin elsewhere, the area becomes warm, red, and tender. In the case of eye, the conjunctiva can look red as well, and that's okay, as long as no other red flag symptoms of orbital cellulitis are present. For orbital cellulitis, the best way to remember symptoms is by understanding that the eye is enclosed in a tight bony orbit. Infection and inflammation within that tight space will cause some congestion symptoms, such as restriction of eye movements and proptosis, which implies anterior displacement of the eye contents. Secondly, changes to vital signs of the eye will be noted because of inflammation and compression of the optic nerve. This will manifest as a change in visual acuity, color vision, and a relative afferent pupillary defect. Lastly, patients with orbital cellulitis will be sicker and more likely to have systemic signs such as fever, chills, loss of appetite, and change to their heart rate and blood pressure. So now that we have determined that there is an infection, the next question is, where did the infection come from? In preceptal cellulitis, we think about a superficial portal of entry, such as adjacent spread from a sty or dacrocystitis, or trauma from a skin abrasion, insect bite, or foreign body. For orbital cellulitis, infection can come from the surface. For example, the etiologies that cause preceptal cellulitis. Alternatively, the infection can come from inside. For internal sources of infection, remember that the ear, nose, and throat are all interconnected by small little channels called ostea. So here we have four choices. Sinuses can be filled with mucus and purulent material, and that can cause a spread of infection to the eye socket, ear infections, throat infections, or dental caries can also then spread into the orbital space. Just as an aside, dental caries are notorious for introducing anaerobic microorganisms into the orbit. Now let's go over the workup for preceptal and postceptal cellulitis. We begin by looking at the patient's overall health to get a sense of their vital signs and uh, the presence or absence of any fever. Following that, one focuses on the eyelid and palpates it to note the presence of any uh, lumps known as sty or dacrocystitis in the medial canthal area, which is swelling of the lacrimal sac. Next, check the visual acuity, color vision, and extraocular movements, as well as the pressure. And lastly, one can examine for proptosis or anterior displacement of one eye. This is done by standing at the foot of the bed and asking the patient to look up to the ceiling. An imaginary caliper is drawn above both eyes and uh, a relative comparison of the position of the globes is performed. Lastly, a dilated fundus examination is performed to look for any optic nerve head edema. Preceptal cellulitis can be diagnosed on clinical examination. No further ancillary testing is required in this case. However, if you're worried about an orbital cellulitis, a CT scan can be ordered to look for the presence of subperiosteal abscesses. These are small pockets of pus that have collected along the orbital walls. Also, a CT can be used to look for congestion of the sinuses and to rule out the presence of any orbital fractures. Lastly, blood work for white blood cell count and platelets can be ordered to get a sense of the overall health of the patient. For preceptal cellulitis, a patient is commonly started on oral antibiotics. The first line of treatment is usually amoxicillin clavulin 
or Cephalax. For patients who are allergic to penicillins, you can consider starting them on Scepter double strand. Patients with orbital cellulitis, consider admitting them to the hospital for IV antibiotics with a plan to step down to oral therapy once improvement is noted. The usual choices for IV antibiotics are clavulin or ceftriaxone. A nasal decongestant spray can be started to clear out the sinuses if a lot of congestion is noted. If signs of progression such as optic nerve dysfunction, worsening proptosis, or eye movement restriction are noted, the patient can be considered for a drainage of the subperiosteal abscess, perhaps in consultation with the otolaryngology colleagues. So guys, that wraps up our discussion on orbital cellulitis and preceptal cellulitis. I have drafted a summary chart that compares the two conditions. If you think you might find that as a useful tool to carry on your clinical rotations, please sign up with my email list and I will forward that to you. So I hope you found this video useful and fun. If you have other areas that you want to go over together, leave me a comment below and I will try to work on that. So guys, keep learning and keep asking questions. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.